Hello, this is the Journey to Podcast, and I'm Sean Zanotti. I believe life is about the journey, not the destination, to find the journey in every step of the road. The highs, the lows, the ups and downs, the twists and turns, it's in that. It's in those moments that makes life so beautiful. Today, our guest is Afita Turner. She has a journey of her own. She is a singer, a songwriter, a producer, an international superstar. Angel, down on my a woman who has done it all and who is married to Ronnie Turner, who is the only son of Ike and Tina Turner. Thank you for being here today and joining me on this podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I am very happy I talked to you a couple of months ago. I was in Dubai. It was very difficult. I missed the flight because you know, the result of the COVID, but right now we are here and I'm very happy to be with you. Thank you for traveling from Dubai to yes. be here on this show today. You don't know how much that means to me. That means a lot to me too, because we are neighbor. You know what I even see that this is just amazing. Tell us what has COVID been like for you? I know you are still performing. You still have a huge career. Um, how have you been adjusting to the COVID conditions during this time? Well, I never adjust because I don't care about what they say. I, I know that Things exist, but I cannot just, you know, be at home and don't go to the gym, don't go to the studio and stay at home for two half months. I was traveling when it was the COVID in Los Angeles. I was in Miami. I was in Mexico. I was in Dubai. I cannot stay like that. It's not, it's not my, it's not my destiny. It's not my karma. I have to go. I cannot just stay at home. Don't do anything. I will go crazy. You know, I love people. I have to recording, go to, you know, do a lot of things. I cannot do that. So I was not in Los Angeles. So has was because of that and because of the conditions, had, did you have to kind of switch up your routine a bit? Yes, I cannot stay in Los Angeles. First of all, it was no gym. I love to eat, <laughs> I love to drink, and I love to cook for my friends. And the gym was closed. I cannot have that. So I stayed for a month, cooked for my friends and my family. And after that, I flew and I fly to, um, um, oh, my God, to Mexico and Miami and Dubai. And I come back to Los Angeles when I reopen. Yeah. What has COVID life taught you? What has this taught you? Well, I think this stuff exists, but they exaggerate what they were doing when it was the, you know, the the Spanish uh, grip. We call that the grip, the Spanish flu and all the stuff back in the day. I mean, we will not never stop the world. This time they stopped the whole world. I mean, you have to be careful. You have to be tested. You have to get the vaccinations but I just think it's just a thing to just destroy the whole economy. Mm -hmm. What was happening back in the day when it was no vaccinations? The world was still going on. It's just a totally crash. It is a politic. It's not well. It's not good. I think it was done to just destroy the whole economy. I did not say it doesn't exist because I miss and I lost friends about that. We have to do all be careful. But it's not the way to destroy California. All my friends who have a restaurant, hairstylists, nails place, they live in a car. They live in a house. They have kids who have nothing to eat. They are destroyed. Why? That was not necessary. What we was doing back in the day? There was so much pandemic back in the day. The king, the queen, the Spanish... I mean, we have so much epidemic in the world. Look in New York, it's destroyed. Look in Los Angeles. Miami was not that destroyed because, you know, the governor, the Santos, have a lot of balls. And it's a friend of Donald Trump. So you don't want to destroy the old tourism and all that. They do a little bit, but back and on. But I know all my friends who have restaurants in Paris kill themselves. In Los Angeles, people live in the, in the car with kids. It's, it's very bad. That was not necessary. That was not necessary to destroy the whole country like that. That's what I'm thinking about COVID. That was meant to be to destroy the whole economy. It's mm. politic. Do you think that we'll be able to bounce back from this? Yes, but it will take a lot of time. Next thing you know, when we go back on the knee, on the feet, they're going to find something else. It's not good. Really not good. What do you do? How do you stay so positive during these times? I believe in God. I'm very spiritual. I love people. I love everything I can, you know, just change people's life or help them on the journey on the day. Um, 
Yesterday I wake up, it was somebody on my stairs. I say, what are you doing in here? Oh, I'm hungry. I don't know this guy. I was have a flight. That was three days ago. I have a flight to take. I go to my fridge. I take a bag. I put everything I can. Just put it in the bag and I give it to him. Mm. I don't know him. I wish everybody can do that. You have to help people. Mm -hmm. Stop to be selfish. You have to help people. Pay it. I know you come from very humble beginnings. Um, do you care to share your your journey, how you started, how you got into show business? I mean, I know you created the way for yourself. You are a go-getter. You are a strong woman. And I think um, for women that are out there that may think, how did she do this? Um, can you explain what the journey is like, how it's so many highs, but it's also many lows. And it's, it's, it's literally a roller coaster, if you will, as we go through this journey of what we call life and stardom and fame and a career. Yes, I was very young, you know. I was two years old when my father, I mean, I don't want to talk about that. When the tragedy happens in my life, I don't have no issue, you know. I mean, excuse my French, it was very hard for me. I have to um, just fight for eat, to sleep, and go to school as a young lady, and after that as a teenager, and after that as a woman, you know. So um, I think I was just very lucky. In my bad luck, I have good luck because God was always there. The angel was always there. And I had so much great time. And I meet so wonderful people, wonderful people in Paris, in Los Angeles, in New York. When I was still at the orphan, I was invited everywhere. I was 16 years old. So God was there. But to give an advice to all these young people, I don't know. I didn't know I have nothing, so I don't have nothing to lose, you know? Mm. It was a hard time, but it's a good time now. Yeah. Do you feel that it, the humble times, the hard times, made you more compassionate, if you will, for people that are trying to get there? Or especially during these times of COVID, just like you gave the example, um, do you think that it also has to do with your giving spirit, has a lot to do with the fact that you know what it's like? You, you really know what, you, know what? you weren't spoon-fed. Yes, 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 absolutely. I think I can really understand all these people because I come from that. After I'm the mother and the father and, you know, grew up with nothing. Not a dress. I didn't know I have no hair. My hair was shaved. I was dressed up like a man. I'm still like very masculine. I didn't know I have anything. And, you know, look at that. It's like a world Disney what happens to me. So maybe that's why I can relate it. Like when I wake up and I see this guy on the stair, oh my God, then I give him all that. Yeah, because I was there probably. Yeah, but I think I'm not the only one. I think a lot of people come from the same uh, journey and uh, understand and just help people. Yeah, yeah. Is Do you feel that that's your life purpose, to help? Well, yes, look what happens to me. I didn't have anything. And, you know, God changed my life and all my fans and the universe. It's just beautiful. But I'm not going to lie, it was very, very hard. Sometimes I was very depressed. I didn't know I have nothing to eat and I'm not place to stay. I didn't know I have anything. It was very hard, but uh, now I have almost the best, so it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now you do. That that time, it's those moments. That moment I want to dive into a bit. When it was that moment where you're like, I, I don't have. now walking. Oh my god. I don't have anything to I'm eat. I'm just gonna do it like that. <laughs> okay. Um, what did you did you did you journal? Did you I don't know exercise? Did you have a friend that you confided when in? When I was at the orphan? Yeah, yes. I don't actually, know if yes. the world knows the story. No, yes. You're open actually, to yes. sharing. Was, yes, actually, yes. I was writing all my uh, first song, not that kind of stay in paradise. I was just write song. I was I, I was not a singer or rapper. I never knew I was doing that. I was just writing poet, poesy. Are you called that poetry? Yes. 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 That's how the beginning. And after that, uh, I was sitting close and I was at the acting school and and people liked my writing. That's how they begin. Everything beginning with writing. What well, about a singer, rapper? Everything was a writing. So you started with writing. Yes. And at that moment in life, uh, things had happened and you were uh, living in an orphanage. You were in an orphanage at the time. Yeah. And then from the writing, how did your mindset change from writing to essentially a, yeah it's a superstar like how did what was that process? oh that was very complicated for the orphan so after that uh i have to get out of the orphan at 17 years old i take a little train i go to paris in a little hotel and the gas stations uh gardino 
and uh, beginning to have a job as a seller person and uh, being some people. I uh, meet some people like my writing and they got me in the studio and I'm recording some song. But I was not a big singer. You know, it was just like a little rapper or poet. But after that, I said, okay, she have a rocking voice. You know, she has to do more screaming song. That's how the beginning, doing more pop, rock, and with a beat, hip hop beat back in the day in 2002. And after that, you know, um, people like me and see me and put me on Fox TV with M6 Friends on the TV show. And I got a deal with Epic Sony Music because they see me on the table singing my song with no microphone. That's how the beginning. I was 23 years old, mm-hmm. but, I, but, but, but the song was existing when I was 17, but nobody gave a fuck because I was not famous. But when they see on TV, they see me on TV, say, okay, oh, that's the girl. You know, everything changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. fame is a bitch. <laughs> it's, it's unreal, right? Yeah. There's, there's good parts of it. There's also some bad parts of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. What are some of the bad parts, would you say, that people may not realize that you have to be a little bit more aware of when you are a celebrity? The bad part is um, I trust a lot of people sometimes and open my door. You know, people contact you on Instagram, want to be your coach, your friends, mm-hmm. um, write you a new song, whatever. And you get them in your house. You have drink with them. You go to the gym with them. You think it's in your friends. And next thing you know, it's not good. They just contact you. You don't know these people. You, I opened my heart. I opened my life. And these people, I don't know these people, but these people, they know nice to me. They know real. And I say, oh my God, I feel that you have to stop to doing that. Why I let people come through my life? I'm too honest. I'm too nice. So now I decide to not let that much people come to my life. Because I let them come to my life. They contact me. We do stuff together. The next thing you know, they're dancing me mm-hmm. and abusing me. And mm-hmm. I say, why I did that? Mm-hmm. So you're 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 right now. What you're working on is practicing your you're you're tightening your circle. I have to start to do that. I open my door too much. I'm too nice. Yeah. Sometimes you can meet some nice people, but I just realized that I have to stop to trust people because I got very depressed and disappointed about people coming my life and rip my soul mm-hmm. and take everything they can. And, Mm-hmm. And I was just trying to be a nice friends. I don't know these people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you do to, pr- to protect yourself now? How do you well, do it? Well, now it's getting more difficult. I was already very, you know, looking for everything around me. But now more is going, more I trust people and I'm disappointed. I just like to just play with my little dog, cook for my friends, do nice things for the homeless people, help people, do my garden. And, of course, fly in Paris, do show on TV or whatever. But... Um, no, I have to stop to open the door for people just mm-hmm. contacting me and destroying my soul. Mm-hmm. They're abusing me. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you have to be careful what you say to people, how you maneuver. No, you know, I mean, they just contact you... you on Instagram. They want to, you know, give you a work lessons. They want to give you, um, you know, go to the studio, whatever. And you trust these people, let them come to your house and everything. And next thing you know, they're abusing you. And it's, they're, not, they're not right and they're not correct people. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So from a musical standpoint, what are you currently working on? Well, you know, right now everything changed. So I'm still writing song and uh, recording song. But I, I didn't know two for one I, one year and three months. I mean, with the COVID. Yeah. So right now just doing, you know, recording some music. That's about it. Yeah. Coming into this family, being such a famous family, what was that like for you? Or was there a transition that you had to go through um, once you did that? Uh, no, it's no transitions. You know, I was in the studio and Nat Junior was the engineer. And it was just amazing. And, you know, I wanted to not come to play the bass on French Kiss. And, uh, yeah, that was nice. So they was very happy to work on my uh, project, on my new album from Paris. That was a long time ago. That was in 2005. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. You guys have been married a while. So I'm sure. 14 years, yeah. Yeah. So there's tons of highs, lows, and everything in between, just like it is for anyone else's marriage, I'm sure. And then you add on to it who we're talking about. Um, were, did you ever, were you ever, um, as you entered into this marriage, were you ever concerned about making sure you had to, you know, I don't know, dot your I's the right way and cross your T's the right way? Or were you kind of already, because you already had this career and you already were doing this, were you, are you saying it really wasn't much of an adjustment? 
which kind of adjustment? Adjustment to just being in this into another no, level. Of no, fame. no, 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 no. I was in the studio with Alex, and the engineer was Ag Junior. I was recording French Kiss, and uh, the bass player was Ronnie Turner, and they come to play the bass and the engineer. I pay for. They was working on my album. It was like that, you know. And the way that I was thinking, there was very good musicians. Ag Junior is uh, amazing. He's one of the best engineer. Actually, he have a Grammys for Ike Turner on the last album, Rhythm uh, with the Blues. Mm. And Ronnie Turner, who played with Ike and Tina, one of the best best player and an excellent rock producer. I was very happy to meet them. They work on my album. It was like that. I was not dating Ronnie Turner when he was working on my music. He was mm -hmm. working for me, actually. Mm -hmm. I paid them. Yeah. And they did a wonderful job. And I love the all. I love the all family. I love Ag Junior, the best engineer, and uh, and Ronnie is one of the best best player, and guitar player, and the, and the beat was very rock. They're very good, They're very good, like the daddy. Yeah, that's true. What's life like? <laughs> what's life like for you guys now during in the midst of COVID? Do you are you still? Do you guys gather all together? Do you kind of do FaceTimes? Kind of, can you share with the world how I don't you guys do, are? I, no, I don't do FaceTime. Like okay. I say, I don't, I, you know, all that COVID stuff. I was in Mexico. I was in Dubai. How do you guys all stay in touch? Well, uh, I'm coming every 10 days. Okay. I fly back, fly back. I didn't do that much show, but I still have to do guest appearance. I was in Miami and in Dubai, but I was not able to do a big concert, but I was still have to walk and do a photo shoot and all that. You know, I have to make a living because um, I have a huge uh, lifestyle. I like restaurant dress and wine and champagne. So, yeah, so I have to make a, make some money here. Yeah, and actually, what's really not happening in Los Angeles. Last May, you announced that you were running for president <laughs> of... Um, <laughs> Oh, you of, know you about that. <laughs> yes, I did my research on you. Yeah. Uh, the president of France. Yeah, and yeah. I was really impressed. Yeah, me too. Um, you mentioned that you're running on a platform opening, really that's opposing um, police violence, which, as you know, has been on, on the forefront right now yes. and is really yes. something that's passionate for me too on a yes. personal level. Yes. Um, if you are elected, you would be the first female and the first North African president of the republic. Yes. And then in January, I saw that, that you then redrew your candidacy. What made you decide to do that? What led to your decision to then step back after you decided to... to you know um, what? Afford? I don't have enough money. Okay. I'm going to tell you right away. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. I don't care. I mean, all the fans are, oh, my God, we want you to be a president. That's okay. So that was going very well. It was better than everybody on the statistic. But after that, who's going to pay the campaign? You know? And Donald will not pay for... <laughs> Donald Trump, Obama, don't going to pay for my uh, Fidel's campaign. So I said, you know what? It's good, but I have to step it up. All the fans want me. Because, you know, my public know I come from the street. I can do a lot of things. So, you know, what happens is um, the guy from... Uh, Mr. Mr. Floyd. George Floyd. Mr. Floyd. Yes. Yeah. That really devastated me. I was crying. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. I was very disappointed. And what, what I'm going to say right now is very crazy. I think if I will be at the moment when that happens, mm -hmm. this guy will not lose his life. I will talk to that guy. You stop. Mm -hmm. You're going to kill him. You're going to jail. We have you on your video. You lost your wife and you and your family, and you're going to jail. Stop! Get up! You knee on this guy. Can we just jump on this guy? Nobody move. Everybody was with the camera. The little girl was there. I'm sure if everybody said, "Look, explain him," but it was too much talking. Hey, bro, you're a bomb right now. This guy didn't understand that. We have to talk him with God. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, you kill somebody right now. You lost your wife. Mm -hmm. You business. You job. You going to jail. Get your knee out of the guy. It just jab on him. Nobody move. Mm -hmm. It was very confused. I was very depressed. I was very divisive. And let's go talk about the guy about the saw. Because I did my rushers. This Who calls somebody on the phone for a $20 bill? These people. I don't talk about, okay, this guy put this knee and killed the guy. 
why you called the police on this guy? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? You come out well. Take care of your destiny. You was not supposed to call the police on that. Every day beginning with the store, call the police on that black brother. Mm -hmm. Why they call the police on him? Over, I give you $20. Stop, don't do that. That was bad. Why you call the police? That beginning with that fucking son of a bitch called the police. Period. I was devastated. And people there with the camera. They was not strong enough to talk to the guy. Get your knee out. You're going to jail. You lost your wife, your kids. You killed the guy. Mm. And all jump on him. Mm -hmm. Nobody move. He does some bomb shit. You don't understand that. Mm -hmm. White folks don't understand that. You have to talk with the heart. I think it will be one or two people that will change that. Well, this guy is dead right now. I was devastated. Everything beginning with a phone call. Mm -hmm. That bastard from the fucking shop called the police over a twenty dollars bills, and look what happens. Terrible. So <sighs> I was still talk about patience right now. I'm not talk about that like that. I was devastated. It's crazy. Do you think that? Is, is it a done deal? I mean, I can see your passion as you're talking about this. Do you think that you may change your mind and, and decide to go forward with running for president? No, I cannot do it right now. Okay. I'm telling you why. Yeah. First of all, when I see what's happening in the U.S., with, I mean, all that, I didn't have enough money to back me up after that. Then all the fans decide I feel that they're not going to be the president. It was very high. It was 28%. But, you know, to the hand, you have to get, you know... <laughs> Money to do all that. Yeah. Then it happens. But it's okay, you know, it's okay. I will uh still doing nice thing for um you know, homeless people, orphan and people I can help, like I always do it. Before I was famous, before I was not. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know. But no, president not gonna happen. No. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Yeah. Okay, so you're not just telling us that it's a, it's really a, it's a done deal. You're not gonna go ahead and move forward you later. You know what? No. Yeah. No. And not next year's either. Yeah. And maybe we'll do something from, you know, the city and the, um, how you call that in the U.S.? Under a city? No. It's a world in the U.S. What, uh, what was it? On the people, you know, I, I do a lot of stuff for the people in the street and uh, honor city. No. Help me in English. Help. Uh, you know, people in. Um, volunteering? No, more than that. It's called oh. uh, inner city. Yes. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I help, you know. Yes. Yeah, that's where I come from. That's what I do. Yeah. I help people like that. But yeah, now they don't do anything. I'm telling you the truth. Because what's happening in Los Angeles, I did not do anything right now. You know, go feed people and all that. But I think people have to help each other. Really, really help each other. Really, really. Yeah. I think that's really what's come out of COVID for me too. Just watching, it's like it, it's 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 a different ball game. This is not about what can you do for me, but what can you do for me? What can we do for each other? How yes. can we help each other? Yes. yes, and help each other grow. Yes, and um, I think a lot, a lot of people do it though. A lot of people help each other, but uh, yeah, after the COVID, it was a little bit more difficult. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So as I was preparing for this show mentally, I thought about your mother-in-law, about Tina. And, you know, she's known to so many as the queen of rock and roll. Um, your father-in-law, Ike, was a musician, one of the pioneers of music, of rock and roll music. Yeah. Um, her life, his life was all so very public. Um, what was that like for you marrying into, into this family? Well, you know... Um, I was a singer, songwriter, a TV star on my own. I was an orphan. I met uh, Ronnie Turner when I was recording a uh, French Kiss, uh, who was produced by Ike Turner Jr., always uh, Ike Turner's son, who's a hell of engineer. He have a Grammys on the Ike Turner last album. Uh, this family, I love them very much because we have the same energy, and we come, we coming from the bottom. And we always fight and always do everything on the own. That big glam studio. I mean, uh, as an orphan, I can really relate to Ike Turner and Tina Turner because we have to work very hard. You know, we was not produced by the father or the mother. Uh, we coming from the ground. And I think that's why, you know, when I'm recording French Kiss, 
the engineer was Ag Junior, who is uh, Ag Turner's son. Ronnie Turner come to play the bass. That's how they like to work on my project first, before I was a wife, you know? Yeah, I, I love the family very well. Were you nervous at all about stepping into the family and them being it being such a public uh, public family, such a big name to be married? No, into? because in the first time I did not know uh, when I was in the studio recording French Kiss and they say Ag Junior are gonna be the engineer. I say, oh, is I, oh Ag Junior, and after that I say Ronnie Turner gonna play the bass. What? And I said this wonderful tall guy with dreadlocks, looked like a football player. I said, what is the son of Argentina? It's one of the best best players in the world. I say, oh my God, that was crazy, you know? So yes, that was, a, but that was a long time ago. It was in 2005. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so from 2005 until now, so when you first, when you first, you know, got married and you're in the family, is there a process of just getting comfortable or just getting comfortable to the fame, the additional fame that comes along with, uh, with the, the marriage? What did you mean? Is there was there anything that you had to do to kind of uh, mentally oh. get yourself prepared for what you were embarking on? No, I don't have nothing to do. I was already Leslie. I was already signed with Epic Sonic. I have a number one show in Paris. I was a host for Black Beauty in Europe for like back in the day. So no, they was just happy to see somebody from Europe and do something. And of course, this I Turner is a legend. That was nice to meet them, you know. Uh, but it was not like that. It was just you know. Just wonderful spirit. Speaking of Ike, um, what's out there publicly about him, especially the, Tina, the, the new documentary that has just been released on HBO Max. Um, I watched that just preparing for this interview with you. And in that documentary, um, Tina spoke heavily about, uh, she, she said, quote unquote, it just wasn't a good life. And that she described in detail how he would he would abuse her or do these things to her, but that she loved her family. She loved her children. Um, what was his personality like? Uh, my condolences. I know that he has since passed away. Yes. But can you take the world into his world, into who okay, Ike Turner I, I, is? Ike was a wonderful guy. Ike was paying rent for people. Uh, I give people a break. Actually, he got Tina a break. I mean, everybody talk bad about Ike. But what Tina will do with Ike, Ike is the one who give him the beginning, the stage, the the four, the rolls, the stage, the the wig, the the hit. You know, Ike was a wonderful guy. Um, he was a genius, and uh, Tina was um, also part of the success. Uh, that's what I have to say. I think this two there is one of the best. I think Ike and Tina really the best in the the history of rock and roll. And Ike, Ike is just, I mean, I mean, look what he did with the tree girl, with the wig and the, the little dress and, and the eye cat and everything. It's just brilliant, brilliant guy, very much so. When you hear stories or you hear her speak of these things, does um, does that match the person, the Ike that you knew? Um, or was, was the abuse and uh, something that was more behind doors and you just don't it's hard for you to even fathom him being that person oh well you know i'm not a lawyer i'm not there to talk about you know uh i can she not know wedding i love both of them and i think my father-in-law i do is a genius and he's the father of rock and roll and uh he did a wonderful job on the song and the i cat and everything he did can you imagine to be a black guy at the time and organize all that by yourself it's just brilliant so i love them i think they're just wonderful um, in the documentary, um, I, Tina spoke of when she found herself, when she got on that plane and she finally left and she found herself and how she kind of broke out and became this woman, the woman that we see right now. Mike was a violent man when I met him. What's that? person like? What is it like to have such a strong person, um, icon, um, and see her go from that person to this uh, person owning her strength, owning who she is? Uh, can you be more specific? What you mean? Um, when she went from, when she, in the, in the documentary, she spoke of the fact that um, 
she 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 used the quote that it was like living in death. Yeah. And that she knew that she needed to walk away. And 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 so she mentioned that when she walked away, it was on the fourth of July, and mm -hmm. she goes through this whole process, mm -hmm. which I was just mesmerized listening to. And then from there, it talks about how she then, you know, went on. She started doing TV and doing press and yeah. became more yeah. of her. Yeah. That strength that comes along with a woman to be able to do that. Yeah. Did that do something for you to see her? Oh, wait, I just think it's uh, very powerful and, you know, very courageous to be a woman and get out of these uh, situations when everything is done, the music, the dancing, the booking, and just get out of that on your own. Of course, it takes a lot of good and courage. And I love that. It's just amazing. Very courageous lady, absolutely. And I think she really deserves what she has. That's why she's such a... I mean, to me, I mean, the big more rock star in the world. I always loved James Brown. I'm a big fan of James Brown. And when I was a little girl, I was always see, before I was a Turner, then Tina was like, to me, a James Brown girl. I mean, James Brown, Tina Turner, to me, the best. And if you look, it's, it's pretty much that. From day one, was she always the loving mother, mother-in-law to you, or was there a process that you had to go through? To no, no, through? she's not that kind of lady. You know, she she do his own thing. Uh, I am a Fida Turner, uh, as an orphan, no mother, no father. I never have nothing in my life, no dress, no food, no place. I do everything on my own. Maybe that's why I come to that family. You know, it was not like that. Nobody never give me anything. And it's great because you have to learn on your own. You got to get on your own. Nobody gonna do nothing for you. I mean, some people got the chance to be probably the father, father or the mother or whatever. It was not like that for me, you know? So I always do everything on my own. Maybe that's why, you know, I was related to Ike Turner. With the black guy making on his own time was very hard. And, you know, segregations and racism and the black people was there, the white people was there. I mean, look what this guy did in rock and roll history. I mean, rock in 88, he write that song. It's just crazy. A guy from Mississippi. It's amazing. And look what Tina also did. I mean, he find her, but whatever. She had the strength also to do his own thing after him. But of course, the father of the and the architect about the old Turner is Ike. And you know, I I, I love I love my father in law very much and my mother in law. But without Ike, actually that's you know, my real name is Afida Turner. And I owned in by from him to marry the son. So, yeah, I respect that a lot. I mean, these people work very hard. Love it. Um, I want to wrap up the segment with um, a, a part of the show they were calling Tell and Tell, which is which is a play on the word show and tell. Is there something that you can tell us? It can be anything. Uh, tell the world that they may not know about you. It can be, um, I don't know, your workout routine, your morning, uh, what you do every morning. It could be, I don't know, your favorite meal. I'm just. Food. I love food. <laughs> tell us what. So you're a foodie. So what's that like? What What's your What are your favorite meals that you can share with us and kind of take us in your world a bit? Well. I do love to eat a lot. So one of my passions is to cook. Um, I love to cook uh, lamb chop with mashed potatoes and mushroom. I love to cook real spaghetti bolognese from Italy with the garlic bread, the real sauce, the real pasta, the real bread. I love to cook couscous from my country. Um, I really love to cook and I invite my best friends in my house. And I love to eat a lot, but sometimes I have to stop to eat. Uh, so I stop to eat the, my, <laughs> my weakness is the burger and the french fries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's your weakness. Oh my God, I'm okay. going crazy. So eat it out and uh, sometimes I order McDonald's. So, you know, the Burgers burger with my, with french fries and, and, and Big Mac sauce and the Fanta. That's my favorite. That's really my favorite. But sometimes I have to leave it alone, and so I drink a smoothie and a boring salad that go to the gym. But I do that like two, three times, but I'm really a big hater. I mean, I like to eat. That's why I have the breasts and the legs <laughs> and the ass. I like mashed potatoes and steak. But sometimes I have to leave it alone because I'm doing too much. Yeah. And by, you know, when I was young, I don't have to do all that. I was very skinny when I was just sang with Sony Music. I was 25 years old. I was like that. But after 40... I know. I get it. After 40, yeah. something changed. And the yeah. breasts and the, the ass. And the, oh, my God. <laughs> I have to go run. So 
I did have to go around a little bit, but uh, I still enjoy myself. But I, I know also to leave it alone. I'm not going to do burger, mashed potatoes, and pizza all the time. Sometimes, you know, I force myself to just get a boring salad and soup and go to gym. But it's not really part of my character. I really like food. Yeah. I'm a Capricorn. Sash Capri. I like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> and a good red wine. Wait, I do want to ask you before you leave. Yeah. What is your morning routine? Do you have oh, a routine God. of what you do yes, every morning? Course, Can you course. share it with us? Oh, man, it's crazy. Okay, you I want to know. know. Yes, so, I want to know. You know, I'm in Dubai, in Paris, so I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm in my office, so the studio is in Sino, mm -hmm. 4 to 7. Mm -hmm. Open the computer, see so what is all these crazy people are putting me online. <laughs> it's crazy. So take that, take the email. So it's like 4, 5, 6 o'clock, do a lot of coffee. Do my prayer, pray with my little baby. Mm -hmm. You, you, my little wonderful Bisho. Then I adopt him for the shelter. In thousand, I want the best dog in my life. I love him. I love him so much. I'm doing that. And after that, I go into the gym. And after that, I come back and I cook lunch, dinner, you know, for my family, for my husbands, that kind of things. That's what I'm doing when I'm in LA. When I'm in Paris, when I'm in Dubai, when I'm in Miami, it's only about me. Just walk on the beach, go to the gym, do a photo shoot, do a music, do a concert. But in Sino, it's only about family. Yeah. And the little baby, you, you. Okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. So depending on the city that you're in, depends on your morning routine. Yeah, but LA is hard. When you wake up at 6 o'clock, you know. It's, yeah. LA is heavy. Yeah. You have to have a lot of energy in here. It's yeah. very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? But I love it. I've been here like for 20 years. Yeah. What um, before we before you leave, any words of advice you can give to someone who may be listening or watching, um, maybe in the oh, in yeah, a fuck yeah, with COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do never listen nobody. <laughs> don't listen nobody because people just say, "Oh no, don't do that." Oh no, you know I make what I am. You know, and my and my little own, you know, Amber Jenny, because I did not listen nobody. Mm. Everybody say, you're not good enough. you too fat. you too black. you Arabic. you American. you French. You're not rich. You're not pretty enough. This and that. Fuck you. I'm still doing what I, you know, what I want to do. What God tell me what to do. Do not listen, people. Because people are just going to say, yo, you cannot make it because you're not pretty enough. You don't have the clothes. You're not a blondie girl with a beautiful eyes and, you know, your father is not a big producer. No, just do what you want to do. And, you know, with your heart, with your soul. Do, I think really to make it, don't listen nobody. Mm. Of course, at a certain point you have to listen to executive, whatever. But in the first part, just listen your heart and your soul and what God tell you. Yeah, just just feel your soul and your heart. Only... Because people always tell you some, you know, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. I never listened to that because where I come from, it was already nothing. Mm. So mm -hmm. when you know I'm nothing, you just do, oh, they always say, oh, what you, what you doing? No, it's not good. You, you don't. Okay, all right. This, they was laughing about me, you know. Mm. They was laughing because I was very ugly. I had no, I had no hair. And I was, you know, all that kind of things. And and I did on my own. And now I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Mwah. I love myself and I love God so much. Yeah. Oh, I love the self-love. I was going to ask you that. So knowing that, do you kind of, how do you let go of those thoughts or those conversations of things that you've heard people say and say kind of, look day. at me now. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Well, they're still, they're still doing the same shit on yeah. Instagram. Say, you too fat, you ugly. Yeah. You do, you that. I don't care because I look at them and say, okay, I see it. I don't care. Yeah. I'm living my best life. I love God, I love my friends, I love my fans. You have to be focused on yourself. Yes. And, you know, listen the message of God and the universe and be so uh, thankful and grateful about, you know, the journey and what God gave it to you. No matter what people say about you and this and that, and you don't have it in the first place because we born different way, you know? Yes. Uh, like me as an orphan or whatever, you know, it, it was very, very hard for me as a me girl, me girl and as an orphan, and especially try to make it in the show business. Because mm -hmm. I know, I know, you know, you know, 
guidance and I did everything on my own. You know, when I meet Ike and Gina, you know, Ike, very, very bad for us, passed away. You know, so we, we did a couple of show, but after that, it stopped. And, and, and also Tina, like 81 years old, retired and just, you know, take care of his own health and his, and his husband and his own life. So you, you, you just have to do it on your own. So I didn't know have that kind of support, not from my father-in-law, not from my mother-in-law, but it's fine because my fans base in Europe and France is just amazing. And God was there. So like, like I say, you always have to go uh, with the flow and and your heart and don't listen to people. If you really want to make, to come back to you questions, don't listen to people. Because people are going to say, you're not pretty enough, you're not good enough, you're not rich enough, you're not uh, tall enough, you're not... Uh, no, I don't care about what you say, I'm going to do me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I'm sorry, I have a French accent. Sometimes it's hard for me to say the right word, but I think people can understand. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think life is beautiful and the fun is amazing and God is amazing. Of course, you have to uh, fight very, very much. It's, it's not easy. It was still for me, it was and it's still very, 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 very deep. You get to very difficult. You got to be, you don't have nothing to lose. You know, when we, 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 you don't have no mother and the father and have nothing you have to fight for. You know, I wish I would have everything for me to make. You know, mother will do my hair, father will produce me, pay my studio, it didn't know happens for me. But it's good because they make me who I am and maybe I can relate like the guy was on my stage this morning. My Both my parents passed away. So when you talk, I know because I'm, I'm walking in those same shoes. So I know what it's like. It's a loss that... But it um, passed away when you was young too. No, no, no. Um, my dad died at the start of COVID. And my mother died um, eight years ago from cancer, breast cancer. Died yeah. in a matter of three but, months. But it's still very heavy. Oh, my yeah. gosh, still heavy. It's, yeah. I, I tell people. You have a brother and sister. I have a sister but and a brother. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. Of course. Yeah, it's hard walking yeah. around when you yeah. don't have yeah. a, a parent yes. or parents. Yes. It's a different lifestyle Absolutely. of walking around in life. So I know what you're saying. I'm not just asking you. I know because I, mean, I experience it. Yeah. Um, so when I'm asking you things, trust me, I am I'm very coming sorry from a place for, of... I'm very sorry for your loss. Yeah, I oh, understand. Oh, yeah. thank you. It's very bad. Yeah. But everybody, a lot of people are going through to that, and we have to um, stay strong and uh, and pray. Yeah. Very sorry to hear about your loss, especially plus for COVID. Oh, breast cancer? Or the... Your father was my, COVID? Uh, no, my dad died at the start of COVID. It wasn't, it was, he had a brain tumor. It was not related to COVID, just literally right, the very right, start of COVID. Right. My mom died from breast cancer. Uh, um, so I've experienced loss. Well, what it was his age? Um, my mom would kill me if I said her age no. on the radio. But no, she was in her, she was uh, older. Yeah. <laughs> but she would know, have I, a fit, so I would honor no, her. <laughs> no, but I, I, I lost so many people, uh, uh, friends with, uh, you know, I don't like to say the name because yeah. I'm very spiritual. Um, what, what, what you just talking about? Oh, I'm about. spiritual too. Yeah, I'm scared to say it too. Yeah. yeah. You know what's interesting about death that, and I don't know if it's I have like, a lot of friends got that same things, and uh, it's so scary. They lost their hair, and they say like, oh my God, it's yeah. too much. That's why I cannot say the word. We're like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. This, this stuff is very, 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 very serious. Oh, it's serious. Oh, Once you, hair, yeah. This, they're like, oh my God. It was, yeah. yeah. And and, and 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 a lot of people like women very strong. Mm-hmm. This, this gone, this and that. Yeah, this, yeah going and on. you got to keep going. And they back and say, "Oh my god, yeah, it's just beautiful." That was how my mom until the day she literally took her last breath. She was still working and maneuvering, and I mean, honestly, and when they lost all this and that, yeah, like, oh, like you got to be so courageous to yeah. deal with that. Yeah, really. But I've learned in this what loss really means. And right. for me, the death part, I've learned that life really does go on. I'm I'm super spiritual. So I feel my parents' spirit around me. Yeah. I, I yeah. can hear, vo- you know, oh, I, yeah. I feel that. I'm, yeah. yeah. And, um, and I lead by that. I'm, I'm literally walk through life from a spiritual sense. And Understand. so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, in, in that sense, it helped me this, this time, um, when my dad died was a little bit, I, I was able to accept it differently because I've been through so much before. So to yeah. your point, when you go through things, it prepares you for the next step. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But like, man, the breast, the, 
I mean, the, the yeah, pressures, it's crazy. Yeah, I met so many friends that I thought, well, I was very devastated. That's mm -hmm. like I lost it and everything. Oh my god. Yeah, this is crazy. Some I don't know, make it, but like, you don't want your hair in this. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, it's too just much. yeah, it's a yeah. lot. Yeah, it's a but lot. They, they, the deal with it. Yeah, deal with it. it's a lot to do. You got to have a tight circle. Back to your point of the circle yeah. and who you're yeah. around. And yeah, well, I don't want yeah. to more, yeah, and everything. Well, that went by so fast. Yes. I so enjoyed you. Me I too, thank you for dear. being here with us. If someone is interested in following you on your journey, um, how can they go about doing that? Well, you just go on afidato.com and you just go on my Instagram and my next TV show. And of course, the wonderful show on the journey with uh, Sean Zanotti. And we'll have more and next. And it was just amazing. I really I enjoy it. I enjoyed this yes. too. Thank you so much for being on thanks, the show. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for you to uh, having me. And uh, it's not thanks for you to having me. It's thanks for you to uh, have these wonderful conversations about all that great things. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Oh, me too. Yeah. I, I know it came from your heart. And yeah. so that for me is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that concludes this episode of The Journey Told Show. I'm going to leave you with words that my father has often said to me as we we're just talking about my dad in spirit, and that is to remember to be the best you that you can be. Yes. Let that sizzle in your spirit. Until next time, folks. Hello, everybody. This is Afida Turner. I'm finally back in Los Angeles. I was in Paris, Dubai, in Miami. Of course, everything is very close right now, but I'm very happy to be on the journey with a wonderful host and friends, Shen. And we are on the journey right now. Make sure you keep in touch. You'll be on my story on Afida Turner. And of course, on all the wonderful talk show to this wonderful lady. We love you very much. Keep in touch. Mwah! Much love from Paris, Los Angeles, and the journey tonight. Mwah!